Welcome traders uh, to today's session uh, with me, Patrick Munley. We're going to get started here in 30 seconds. If you can hear me loud and clear and you can see the welcome screen, if you just type a Y into the chat box so that I know we are good to, uh, to go here. <clears throat> Testing audio one, two, three. Type a Y in the chat box if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen. Testing audio one, two, three. Testing audio, one, two, three. Okay. Welcome to today's introduction to the E-mini and E-micro S&P contracts. In today's session, I'll be introducing you to the instrument structure and advantages, along with highlighting some unique market mechanics and having information for the products. I will also introduce you to my core strategy for trading the E-minis and demonstrate how you can consistently use my pre-market analysis to reap consistent returns from the markets. For those of you who are here for the first time, uh, let me briefly introduce myself. Uh, like I said, my name is Patrick Munley, and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. <clears throat> I left with some colleagues and went on six, to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally at times overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down, basically giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is, uh, is an understatement. I had to really stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period uh, of two, well, 18 months to two years, really. Uh, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, and extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means that I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and focus solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. From, 20, from 2010, sorry, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. 
In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in other market orientated projects. I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill uh, and providing an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical setup videos for two to three markets or two to three instruments that I'm tracking in, uh, in the market. And I also obviously run the Tickmill rapidly expanding e-mini strategy group, where I provide a daily specific uh, trade plan with intraday trade updates. And since its inception, I've delivered over a thousand points of upside. My other passion project is leading trader education for a premier trading education brand called fxqueerswap.com. We offer development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Most recently, I've been involved in developing the Trader Blueprint Strategy Group, which is a professional trading community where traders of all experience levels can access daily institutional insights from tier one investment bank, trading desks, and market strategy teams. There are regular market bulletins with in-depth positioning and sentiment analysis, actionable real-time chart analysis with daily setups and trading updates from our expert traders with live trader education sessions, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a pro. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. So let's jump into today's material. The E-mini or the ES or the minis is a futures contract that tracks the S&P 500 stock market index. It's traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, or the CME, via their Globex electronic trading platform. Trading is 23 and a half hours a day, five days a week, using the contract symbol ES. The e-mini contracts are available on a wide range of US stock market indices, commodities, and forex. However, when traders refer to the e-mini or the e-minis or the SPOOs, they are generally referring to the most important contract, the futures contract that tracks the S&P 500 stock market. E-mini futures were originally launched in September 1997 to attract non-professional investors into trading index futures. Previously, the only game in town had been the large S&P contract, but it had become too expensive for the little guys to trade. So the CME created the E-mini contract, which was one-fifth the size of the large S&P 500 futures contract, and importantly, only required one-fifth of the margin to trade. The E-mini became a huge success, not only with non-professional traders, but with professionals too. The micro E-mini futures contract is the same as the regular S&P 500 E-mini contract in every respect, except it's one-tenth the size. That is, each one-point move in the S&P 500 index is worth $5 per micro E-mini contract, compared to the uh, $50 for the E-mini or the ES. And the margin to trade a micro e-mini contract is also one-tenth the size. So what are the benefits? Well, it's equally easy to go long or short. You either buy or sell the current e-mini contract and there is no uptick rule. Uh, there's 24-hour trading, like I say, which makes the e-mini attractive to traders around the world. Overnight moves in related equity markets like the DAX or the FTSE in the UK can be played with one trading vehicle. The electronic trading platform means that your orders are entered instantaneously, and when executed, you are notified instantaneously. Changing and cancelling orders is trivial. There are no phone calls to brokers, and you know exactly where you stand every second you're in a trade. It's a level playing field insofar as the Globex electronic trading platform means that large and small traders have equal access to the market. And trades are executed in the order they received, unlike the days of old with the pit traded futures or equities, there are no more of those backroom games being played. There's a tight bid ask spread, so there's so much volume is traded through the e-mini, the difference between the bid and the ask price is only ever one tick or 0 0.25 index points, which is the minimum price movement. Again, that large depth of market means the liquidity is there so that there's plenty of volume either side of the last traded price for large orders to be filled with minimum slippage. It's volatile, yes, but not unmanageable. The E-mini is active every day, which gives the day trader plenty of opportunity to trade. Remember, a sleepy market is pretty much impossible to trade, but the E-mini volatility is also manageable, except maybe around certain key events like the FOMC or the non-farm payrolls release. 
Low brokerage rates make it extremely attractive. Broker commissions for trading the minis continue to fall. This excludes the exchange, clearing and regulatory fees. And when you factor those in, your round trip or the in and out brokerage commission is very attractive. Like I said before, there's a low margin requirement. To open the day trading position with Tickmill, you only require 1,000 US dollars to open a micro account. Remember, those are the absolute minimums. You should be trading with much more capital behind your positions. The lower tax rate, it offers a lower tax rate than trading Forex or stocks. The income from trading e-mini futures is taxed as a capital gain. There's no trade by trade accounting. Another advantage of the tax treatment of the e-mini futures is that the tax reporting requirements are minimal. In particular, there's, like I say, no trade by trade accounting, only the net profit for the full year is needed. So now we understand the instrument and the trading venue, I want to demonstrate some of the unique aspects of this contract. The fact that the e-mini is a derivative of the S&P 500 allows us to access some unique information commonly referred to as market internals. Market internals are often compared to the instrument dashboard on a car, giving indication of the performance and alerting the driver to any issues occurring under the hood. So let's take a look more closely at what market internals are and how we can incorporate them into a consistent trading strategy. First, volume. As a unique feature of, the, of trading the exchange traded derivatives as opposed to uh, contracts for difference or the Forex volume data, um, which is incomplete at best, there, as there is no central uh, Forex exchange and the banks who dominate Forex trading don't share volume data in real time. However, we get a true reflection of actual volume, which is shared directly by the CME and it's available to all market participants in real time. I use volume as a tool to confirm breakouts and opportunities to fade the market. Spikes in volume will often be accompanied by intraday profit taking. Next instrument that we use in terms of our internals is the New York Stock Exchange tick index. This gives us the relationships of stocks up ticking versus down ticking. The tick is an extremely useful tool for intraday traders. For example, if there are 3000 stocks trading on the NYSE and 1500 trade higher from their previous price and 500 trade lower than their last price, the tick will read plus 1000. But wait, what about the other 1,000 stocks? You say, well, they could be unchanged from their last traded price. When using the tick, we are looking for extremes to enter or exit a trade. Tick readings of plus 100, uh, sorry, plus 1,000 or minus 1,000 are considered very strong as we typically trade between 1,000 most of the time on the New York Stock Exchange. We have some interesting tips for using the tick. Uh, tick readings within the 400 plus or minus 400 bracket indicate chop and we can pretty much ignore them and we want to stay out of the market when the tick is registering in those ranges. On a range day, you can look to fade tick extremes. I apply a moving average to make it easier to see the trend of the tick. Uh, note that extreme tick readings for the day when we get a high tick and a high in price at the exact same time, this more often than not indicates the high in price for the day. When a high tick prints without that simultaneous high in price, we can continue to make new highs until a new high tick is reached. And obviously the reverse is true for a low tick followed by new lows. The next tool I use is the advanced decline line or the AD line for short. It's the second most important of the internals. This indicator tells us the net sum of advancing stocks minus declining stocks. There are roughly 3,000 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange and 3,000 on the NASDAQ. An AD line reading of plus 1,500 is very bullish and a reading of over 2,000 is extremely bullish. On the flip side, readings of minus 1,500 and below are very bearish and readings below minus 2,000 are extremely bearish. These extreme readings are indicative of trending days where once the market continues to trend all the way into the close, we look to the AD line in conjunction with the breadth ratio to confirm trend days. For example, a day with 2,500 advancing stocks and only 500 declining stocks would yield a net plus 2,000 uh, as an extremely bullish reading. So it's going to take a large catalyst to shift the market direction for that trading session. If on the open you continue to see the AD line moving, say, from plus 500 to plus 700 to plus 900, this is a sign of market strength. If, however, the market is moving higher, but the AD line is moving lower, 
This is a divergence and we could see that the market turn. Next, we have the breadth volume ratio composed of volume flowing into up stocks versus volume flowing into down stocks. The breadth ratio is expressed as up volume minus down volume. This reading is important in relation to where it has been, especially where we are now compared to where we were when we opened the day. For example, if at 10 a.m. we have 10 million shares moving up and 5 million shares moving down, the resulting breadth ratio is two to one positive. Twice as much volume is flowing into the stocks going up as going down. If by 10.30 a.m. the market has sold off, but we now have a breadth ratio of three to one positive, this is a signal that the markets are actually becoming stronger and it's time to buy the pullback and look for a long setup. Last, but by no, by no means least, we have the cumulative delta. This is a cornerstone of order flow analysis. Cumulative delta summarizes buy versus sell activity and can help us determine market direction, trend strength, and support and resistance areas. A positive delta refers to uh, when the buyers and the purchases exceed the offers on sale. Negative delta is when the sale exceeds the purchase. Cumulative delta consolidates the accumulated delta information and then plots this as uh, information visual, as you can see on the graph on the screen. By recording and displaying a running count of whether and by how much buyers or sellers are in control, order flow can, be we can better extrapolate order flow and the flow of the market. Delta is an ex excellent tool for detecting divergence between price and the underlying order flow in the market. When price is making new highs, but Delta isn't making new highs, it suggests an underlying weakness to the market and often precedes a pullback or a reversal. And obviously the same is true on the downside. So now we understand the market internals and the unique insight they provide, I wanna briefly walk you through my strategy. By understanding the market context in which we are trading, I'm looking to execute two types of trades. One is a mean reversion trade in a ranging environment. And then I'm looking to trade momentum trades in trending environments, underpinned obviously by the signals from the market internals. Every day I plot pivotal support and resistance action areas that are derived from my multi time frame market volume profile analysis. This allows me to avoid engaging the market in areas of heavy rotation or chop where most traders lose their accounts. The support and resistance action areas have three purposes. They can act as entry levels in mean reversion setups, which is the majority of the time. In directional or trend environments, the action areas act to confirm momentum entries. And lastly, they can be used as targets for trades. I also note additional key data from the prior day's price action. These levels are often important to define the bias for the day. The previous volume point of control, the highest volume price from the previous day, buyers and sellers, this is the level at which they perceive uh, price to be at fair value for the trading session. I confirm the current market context, uh, the dominant side for the market in the near term, so one to three days, one to three weeks, and then one to three months. There are times when neither side is dominant, and then it's important to assess how the cash session develops as to where we're going to engage the market. I also highlight quantitative probability plays based on where the cash or regular trading hour session opens in relation to the prior day, either above, below, or within the prior day's range. There are key levels and probability plays that are based on price testing these levels over an extended data set. This can prove useful for trade entry, exit, and management. Lastly, I note volatility or range analysis, as this helps to inform the current market context and is whether or not the market's in balance in relation to the current volatility. Equally, we can confirm a market that's out of balance and inform the bias for the day. It also helps to inform trade execution and trade management. So what I want to do now is take you through some examples of how this stuff actually works in real time. So, this, uh, this setup here for the day, as we came into the session, we were trading below. These, 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 there are a couple of key indicators here you uh, should be aware of. Um, this blue line here is the current session um, volume weighted average price. So it's the perception of where fair value is based upon the current trading action. I also have this straight line here that moves, as you can see, with price action, and that's called the mid. And what the mid is basically tracking the 50% retracement level of the current session. 
So when we open up the session here on this on this trading uh, on this trading day, we're trading below the midpoint and we're trading below the VWAP. So we're already um, looking for for short setups, and the short setup basically is going to be a break of the primary support here. And what we want to then assess is whether or not the internals are confirming weakness in the market. So we have a tick distribution versus the moving average that's below the zero line. So that means that the, the tick is giving us a negative sentiment reading. We then have the AD line below the zero level and declining. So for, again, giving us further indication of weakness in the market. We have the breadth ratio weak, weakening from the open below its zero line and declining. So we've now got three of our four internals suggesting weakness. And then last but not least, we have the delta, cumulative delta also below its midpoint and declining. So that gives us an entry to play for a continuation trade. And in this instance here, we're trading through the 43.86 area and our initial target then is 43.75. So that's a, a 10 point trade there uh, to the downside. We did actually get a signal there um, versus what we would call an exhaustion whereby we made a new low of the day and we made a new low in terms of tick. So that was our signal to cover that position. So that gives us a 10 point, uh, 10 point trade to the downside. Let's take a look at another example. This is a, a trade to a, a bullish continuation trade to the upside. So what are we looking for here? Well, as we open the session, the cash session, we're trading above the midpoint and above the VWAP. We have our primary resistance here coming in around 43.85. We have a positive tick distribution. The, average, the moving average for the tick is above the zero line. We have breadth improving uh, from below. We're trading above the zero, zero line. We do have, uh, sorry, we have breadth. The AD line is trading above the zero line, so positive. So we have two of the four so far. Breadth is uh, below the zero line, but you can see the moving average is improving. And most importantly here, then we have the delta breaking to the upside and trading above. So we have three of the four indicators or three of the four internals supporting the idea of a breakout. And we know that we're trading above the VWAP and above the midpoint. So that secures a trade to the upside there. And through that 43.85 gives us a move up into our target zone uh, at the 44. So giving us a 15 points of upside there and all our uh, three, three out of our four indicators are supporting the trade. Here we have a move, uh, again, a breakout to the upside. And what we want to pay attention to, obviously, is um, initially we pull back into the primary support zone. And as we do test that support zone, what's important to note here is that we have a positive tick distribution. We have positive momentum. We have a positive AD line, positive breadth. And importantly, again, we have a positive delta. So there's a couple of entries here. You can either enter at the primary support or you wait for price to exceed through the primary resistance, and then you can set long positions as a breakout play uh, to the upside targeting the, um, the next uh, resistance zone here coming in at the 4,300 level. But you'll note that in this instance, we don't get any exhaustion signals and we can actually, by using the internals and their positive slant here, we actually could have traded up into the secondary, uh, sorry, the third resistance zone up to 43.20. So depending upon where you entered, did you, if you played the reversion trade or the breakout trade, there was uh, certainly 20 to 30, uh, 20, 30 points of upside to be taken from that setup. Another example here, market trading below the VWAP, below the, uh, the midpoint for the session. We open up the session, internals are weak, we're trading below the zero line, uh, weak delta. So what we're looking for there is a break through the primary support in around that 43.30, and that takes us down into our target zone there at 43.16. So another 14, 15 points. Again, just using these internals to confirm the, break, the, the breakdown in the market. So this is incredibly important here with respect to taking these trades. We're not just blindly taking breakouts or reversion trades we're reading what's going on underneath the underneath the price the headline price of the of the index to see what the underlying uh, derivatives are actually telling us and the, the flow the money flow within the market and where that's going take a look at another example here uh, this one is a breakout to the upside we're trading above the vwap above the midpoint we have positive internals, everything above the zero line and improving. And so that means we trade the breakout to the upside there through 43.40.
and that gives us a target up towards 43.55 and another 15 points of upside. And again, we have all our internals confirming this move to the upside and the breakout. Take a look at one more example. This is a breakdown trade here. So this is a continuation trade to the downside. We open up below the midpoint, below the VWAP, negative tick distribution, negative AD line, negative breadth, and negative delta. And that's all, once we get those signals, those are indicative of trend days to the downside. So we trade through that initial support around the 43.35, down through the uh, 40.29 area, in below 43.20, and ultimately down into this 43.10 zone. And notice as we get into that 43.10, that we get some divergence here. I re referenced this in the beginning, that the delta is extremely good for tracking divergence and letting us know when a trend may be coming to a conclusion. Now, I don't want to keep going through um, example after example, uh, looking back at charts, it's, it's not particularly useful. But what I did want to be able to just show you is how you can use these internals to read that underlying sentiment in the market. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to pull up the live chart heading in for um, today's session. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the setup as we are looking at today's cash session. And um, in the Tickmill e-mini strategy group, every day before the market open, uh, normally between uh, half one and two o'clock UK time, I provide a five minute, uh, three to five minute video where I highlight the setups for the session ahead. And I also review the prior day's price action versus the plan that I had in place for that day. So, uh, so you can see how the price action plays out versus the plan. And, um, and that's posted into the, uh, the Tickmill uh, Futures and Options Strategy Group here. Uh, you are all uh, welcome to request a two-week free trial to that. I'll, uh, I'll post the link there for those that are interested into the chat and you can request a two-week free trial. Within this, I also provide intraday trade analysis. I provide quantitative setups. Uh, I also provide access to um, tier one investment bank research with respect to the equity indexes. And I also provide real-time trade updates uh, throughout the trading session. Uh, letting you know how I'm trading versus the, the plan I've provided and whether there are new opportunities as the day emerges, because there are some days where the, the plan is, uh, the market doesn't reach the support and resistance levels as per the plan, but I see additional opportunities develop as, as the session develops and as I'm able to read the internals in real time, and I provide updates uh, for those uh, during the, the opening hour of the cash session. Uh, and you are able to follow along in, in real time there uh, for those setups. So looking at today anyway, let's, uh, let's see what we're looking at. I had a, a short position uh, from yesterday. I highlighted in the strategy group that I was get, leaving a short at 43.10. We had the opening swing low there at 43.11, uh, sorry, 45.11. And um, that got filled overnight. And I actually traded down into the, uh, the, primary, the primary support zone at the 40, uh, 44.98. And uh, I covered that position for plus 10 points. And I updated that in real time in the strategy group. Now, as we head into today's session, let's take a look. We're trading below the uh, daily volume weighted average price with a five period look back. That comes in at 45.28. So that gives us a bearish to neutral perspective on the daily session. Um, in terms of the Globex session, so the overnight trade uh, was bearish, but it's come more back into a neutral posture now. We're actually trading uh, just below yesterday's volume point of control. That's the highest volume traded price there. And we can see that comes in at uh, 45.20. So for me today, as we head into the cash session, there are two trades that I'm going to be looking at. One is going to be a break of primary resistance, which comes in at 45.30. So if we can trade up into that 45.30 and we have positive internals, so a positive tick distribution, a positive AD line, positive breath and positive delta, then I'll actually be looking for long positions today. And I'll be trading through 45.30, looking initially for a test of 45.40. Five to the upside. I'll be using on a continuation trade. You can see I have the stop. I'll be using a 9.5 point stop for that continuation trade. So if we get filled there at, for, at um, 45.30, I'll be using a stop of 45. Uh, 
20.5 and then I'm looking initially for a 15 point move to the upside if we can get through there then we should see new all-time highs and the next target on the upside for me will be 45.56 the other trade I'll be looking at today will be a, a bearish continuation trade so if we trade down retest these Globex lows and break them so I'll be looking for a move through 44.93 is the, the the trigger point there for this trade to set up, I'll need to see a negative tick distribution, negative AD line, negative breadth, and negative delta. And if we get that, then I'll be looking for a move down to test the next support zone at 44.80. So as I head into today in the, in the pre-market, those are the two types, those are the two trades I'm looking at. And then I'm going to wait for the internals to confirm those setups as uh, as the market goes live at 2.30 uh, at UK time. I'll also, obviously, like I say, I'll be recording a short video that'll be placed into the, uh, it's a live stream into the chat, into the uh, strategy group uh, for traders to review that in advance of the market open. So that really gives you an overview of, um, of one, the e-mini contract and uh, its structure, its advantages in terms of using these market internals to better guide your trading, to allow you to play, uh, to play these trades, these breakouts and reversion trades. Um, and three, then obviously we have the strategy group whereby on a daily basis, I'm providing a pre-market plan. And then I'm during the first hour of the cash session, I'm giving intraday updates, giving actionable insight into what's going on in the market, how I'm seeing the internals develop and where I see additional opportunities outside of the initial plan. Uh, so with that, it, does anyone have any questions? You can either type into the chat box or there's a Q&A box there. You can uh, type a question in if you have one. Um, I've put into I put into the chat there. Hopefully, everyone can see it. The link uh, for you to take a two-week free trial of the strategy group. If you if you join the strategy group and you decide to stay, uh, the only requirement there is that you open a uh, an e-mini uh, sorry an e-micro account with Tickmill, and you have that account as a live funded account, and then you can have permanent access to the uh, e-mini strategy group. So. Uh, are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question and, uh, and you think I've done a fair, fairly good job of explaining this stuff, if you type an N in the chat box so that I know uh, we, we're all on the same page and, uh, and we're good to go. I'll just give you uh, 30 seconds there. Okay, can't see any questions coming through, so I'm going to wrap uh, wrap this session up. Like I say, uh, really strongly suggest you take advantage of uh, of the two week free trial to the uh, to the strategy group, and I look forward to seeing you in there. Um, okay, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thanks very much, everyone, for your time, and I hope you found the session helpful.